Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wheel of Time, Episode 8. This one is The Eye of the World. I've been enjoying this series way too much, and I really love Episode 8, so I'll get that out of the way. I don't give many spoilers or plot reveals, but I will touch on some things. And let's get out of the way. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. I wish you all the best. I hope you had a good one. Depending on when this comes out. I think it's going to put it out Sunday. So, Merry Christmas. So, we're at the Wheel of Time. Again, I've said how much I love the series of novels by Robert Jordan. They're dear to me. One of my favorites. It's scope. It's grandeur. And... His writing style. Now that I'm at episode 8, which seems to be end of the first season, end of the first book. I can see, again, one of the concerns I've seen or heard, but I've been trying to stay away from things, about what you're missing out on. So I'll touch on that real quickly. And just the feeling I have about people who are into the books. So, if I'm looking at this from a perspective of, I don't know anything about the books, uh, oh, you recommend this? Uh, I think you're going to love it. I think it's going to be, um, you know, hold enough of your interest and uh, characters will develop that you'll like. It has enough of a mix of everything done well. And I think it's going to improve. But when you're looking at it from a fan point of view, from the books, I can understand so much has been missing and what they're changing here and there. And I go back to me just pretending I was or am some sort of writer and someone comes to option my book and my whole series in general. I could see decisions have to be made for television and I sort of maybe have come to that understanding. And that's what I kind of see here. It's someone's vision of what the book should be on the TV format and how it'll play out, how you can gain an audience. And with the success of Game of Thrones, I think something like this is going to be a hit. I think it'll carry forward. But is there going to be a little bit of a drop-off because of the book lovers? And I don't know if that's a valid concern for the TV people, but I'm just trying to, you know, connect with that book lover in me that knows the scope of these books and now has a hint of what they are going to do. So I could see now with a little more clarity or a more informed opinion of how I think this is going to work out. And I think I'll go there for a little bit and um, say that when you look at the season one, very hero's journey, very Lord of the Rings, um, done much uh, better than Legends of the Seeker and some other uh, season ones of shows. Let's say The Witcher 2, which I love, but that, that timeline thing was weird. I think this is going to be a success for majority of people I think book lovers are going to start probably um, becoming more on the fence and but I think it'll hold their interest and I think that's I guess where this little uh, chapter of this podcast will, will go I think it's good enough for the book lovers however there is so much being missed and pulled out that they could kind of do as I'll get into the episode now where they use flashbacks and you could use the second season to actually sum up the first season and explain and um, explore what the first book encompassed in general so I could see that being done you could almost say season two will still be book one so there is that that could happen depending on the storytelling and what style they'll go for. And you do notice, like, with the directors who I haven't been mentioning, there's been several that have done more than one, 
and I'm liking how everything blends. And this one ep episode starts off with a flashback from the previous age. Um, you know, it looks grand and, um, I don't know, not, not really technology, but, um, you know, uh, an elevated existence of this society that had grown and had the, I guess, the idea to cage the dark one, which is, you know, like the Satan sort of thing. And they don't show much of anything of the battle in a sense, but they show the main character of that age, which was the dragon, uh, Louis Theron, Telamon, I think they call him, but I don't know how to be pronouncing names in this show. So they show a flashback of him and his plan to cage the dark one and, uh, you know, them try, uh, the woman trying to convince him to stop, don't do it, and you know what happens because obviously this is not a plot thing, but um, it's kind of hinted and revealed here and there that Louis Theron went with like 99 companions and broke the world. Uh, so... The Eye of the World is the prison where they imprisoned the Dark One, and that's how the vision is, uh, or the, the flashback, let's say, to that society that um, tried to enact this plan, and then it cuts back to Rand, and the episode is focused on Rand and Moraine at the Eye of the World, and the struggle they will go through, and it's pieced together with Things with uh, Peyton Fane, with the Horn of Valir. I was really into it. I'm, uh, some things are a little mind-boggling at the way they ended it because um, I was invested and they were doing things and I'm like, oh shit, is this from the books? Is it not? Um, and you got the little hints of Matt here and there. I thought they... Uh, example and their uh, execution of the magic being channeled together was excellent I was really happy with it the um, culmination with the battle with the Trollocs I thought was epic and again as I've said in a lot of my episodes uh, my podcast I am in a way a fanboy like this is good enough for me that I'm loving it but I'm still trying to be objective but you know for me this goes in my, the way my brain works, and I wouldn't be surprised, nah, I guess I would be, that this comes way before, or somewhat before, Avatar, The Last Airbender. But you can see that element in here, what Robert Jordan was going with, and, you know, the cyclical nature, and the Wheel of Time, and, um, you see these elements in the way they channel, and it, it gives you that, Avatar sort of feeling, but you know, like I said, for me, I can see people going, "Oh, they, they're ripping up Avatar." But anyway, I'm loving how they're doing it. The the scope of their power being revealed here and there, how they can group together and channel, was just um, fascinating. I was, like I said, I was immersed through the whole thing. So you have this episode where you're cutting back and forth, but you're focusing more on Rand. And his dilemma or the struggle, like I said, I'm not going to give too much away. But um, Moraine's water land, um, it can't find her because he, she's masking the bond, and Nynaeve helps him track her. So there's this a little elements going through, but in the heart of it is the Dark One tempting Rand, and the hints are um, from you know, when you get a little bit of Peyton Fane, is, uh, he doesn't actually want them all dead. If that was the case, they'd be dead. He wants them to help them, and he, I guess, is playing the gambit that he can turn them rather than just outright kill them. At least that's sort of the hint that's given in, in the dilemma that's going on in the struggles, and Rand is given a world or a future that he can make real. And all he wants in his, you know, life with Egwene, how they pronounce it, I'm not sure. And uh, the Dark One is tempting him. And meanwhile, in the real world, because Rand is unconscious, uh, Moraine is holding him. And there's that dilemma going on, that, that uh, 
struggle with the dark one shows himself to moraine he's like because earlier in the show he had mentioned you come with one ace of die he's like you know are you crazy your your previous reincarnation or whatever the fuck was um came with 99 so there's that going on and you know what decisions are going to be made and i found it captivating i was really into it again this is me attaching myself to the books and sort of trying to see it more from a general fan perspective people who don't know about the books who don't know about the world we're just watching um the culmination of a first season of a fantasy show i think you got almost all you needed a little bit of touches on the um relationships between them you know how much they love one another in a certain sense and where they come from how they're all uh connected in some way all five of them and you want to go five you can name them all but it's um basically rand perrin matt Iguine, and nynaeve that's from the two rivers all five in one is uh unheard of type thing you know one of those uh, even men in the other episode said it's very unusual for her to see visions with people who are connected so we're here at the last episode he's confronting the dark one or you know putting quote unquote you know representation of what the dark one represents possibly you're never really sure because he shows up with a mask with his flames coming out of his eyes and rain shoots him in the eye and it's a, a kind of um being revealed that he's in a dream world sort of type aspect and what's going on in the real world is different there are elements that are shown revealed properly i think when looking at it from a uh critical eye i think the elements were paced well the um reveal the horn of Valir, things like that i mean you can get into the books and go nuts I know they have to change things, but I'm liking where it, where it was going, where it's uh, going to end up. Because once that dilemma and the struggle is revealed and is over, for in a sense, uh, Lane does find Moraine, and it's revealed that this is not the last battle, this is just the first. And there goes the punch, uh, the line for the series, in a sense. The first season is just the first battle in a new age that is either gonna have the dragon reborn break the world or save it his confrontation with the dark one and now it's hinted that a invasion is coming from overseas this is all sort of book stuff that is done either in and out of order possibly and like the example i gave with lord of the rings where some people might say things others had said all in all i really enjoyed the episode as a season ender, ran the decisions that are made, uh, the struggle. There is a very strong bond and sense with him and Egwene, and there's a definite culmination of that several books in the future, and there's a whole plethora of stuff they're going to have to explore. And again, just looking at it as a first season, I am confident in it, and I'm excited for it. And I made a note, which is odd, because, you know, I'm, I do these things so haphazardly, sorry, that I was moved by the music. One of my nitpicks in almost every episode is I haven't felt the music rise above and carry certain scenes, and it's working well, and it's doing what it needs to do, the sound effects and all, all that, but... As I'm looking at the cinematography and trying to understand how they're using special, effect, spe special effects smartly and the way they use the area and the um, terrain where it doesn't look cheap, it doesn't look fake, and you know, there's that balance you're trying to do with budget, the music was always something that came to me and was like a little underwhelming. I felt it in this episode. I was actually carried by it, and I was so surprised. I went to my pencil and my little pad, and I wrote it down. And for me, that really fixes one of the little nitpicks that was consistent. I'm into the opening themes, music, you know, 
rather than you know Game of Thrones, you just love it, you watch in the opening. So that's got me in this one. I can't say it's either better or worse. Although I will lean towards this, I'm going to say is more of a fun uh, magic uh, the Dungeons and Dragons experience, where I would compare The Witcher also being a very Dungeons and Dragons like experience where things are set up with adventures and plots that are you know somewhat tabletop role playing if that makes sense to people who would ever listen to this so I don't know how much I'll ramble on about this but this is the end of the first season in a sense like I said they could come out with season 2 and it just be a broadening of season 1 so you might you know see a different change there I'm not sure because maybe that's how I might write it to maybe course correct a little bit here and there. Look, the show is not perfect, but you can see they're trying. They're trying enough that me as a fan of the books or a lover of the books is loving the show. But I am aware of how grand the scope is, how um, deep the relationships and descriptions are in the books that go on for chapters and chapters where you're really digging deep and exposing um everything at its core in a such a beautiful expertly done way as a writer which is why Tolkien gets all the love also even after all this time Robert Jordan has that and I think those fans are still going to be a little put off and I don't know I, I find myself in a balance but leaning way towards um, just enjoying a good show and again is it is it that bias that tells me that my disappointment at the Shannara series, which I keep mentioning because it's a great comparison of, I'm, I think if I had to choose the Shannara series by Terry Brooks, might be my favorite series, fantasy series ever. And I'm talking about the whole scope from beginning to end, how he weaved a, a common modern day world into a fantasy world and back and forth and just the scope of everything. And that shows a disappointment. And don't get me wrong, I could find pieces and elements that I liked about it that were really um, done well. But as a whole, it never felt great. It never felt like they, people were invested enough. It just felt a little too cheap and cutting corners and just directions they went in, I don't think were stealing the hearts of the fans like this now the writing styles are much different also i put terry brooks in a different category than a robert jordan because of um you know the scope of their uh, literacy uh, you know and how they understand languages they take different approaches and for me terry brooks is a more down-to-earth um get to the point kind of fall in love with people and their names and their places where Robert Jordan is you gotta check five times for people's names you gotta check three more times for the location and the city name and um, you know formations of uh, divisions of armies like it gets really complicated and um, which is a great thing because it's just a different style of you know, writing, but in what I'm trying to say is my disappointment in the Shinara series or my love of The Legends of the Seeker only going two seasons and they changed everything so much, but I was enjoying it. My enjoyment of Hercules and Xena for what they were back in the day just is being um, satisfied. I'm happy with a show that's trying and doing well and I'm excited for it I'm finding the things that connect me with the, the characters I love I mentioned this again there's a growing strength between these actors and maybe they were chosen well because they play bumbling love stricken teenagers fleeing a village pretty well almost too well in the sense where it's awkward and it feels um, forced in certain aspects where you could look at it and say, oh, they're trying to placate different audiences. And sure, they probably are. Which why there's going to be a big turn here and there with uh, love interests on how they do things. And 
you know, uh, I think the growth and the quiet power behind some of these actors and actresses is a good sign for me. Like, I'm finding it interesting how much I'm drawn to land. And even Nynaeve, which I thought is being, it's happening too quickly in the, in, in the show. But I find myself liking it and being drawn in and feeling uh, I'm affected by it. Uh, the performances, maybe. And I don't know. If I'm going to peek pick a weak point of the series since I've been gushing over it. All right. I'm going to say Perrin might be the weakest point for me so far. And that's just me really trying to connect with one thing that I'm trying to be, you know, real objective about almost everything. And that, that would stand out to me, meaning let's talk about just the five. So we've got Rand, Matt, Perrin, Egwene, and Nynaeve, the five that were undecided to be the dragon reborn, but Nynaeve was ruled out because of her age, but because of the connection, Moraine was saying things like there were prophecies about a multi-headed dragon, and there's just some mystery involved. So, those five characters you're going to want to have cycle through all these episodes. And if you want to compare it to Game of Thrones, you, you can get the idea. It's such a, you know, well-done show for the most part. And you can see your, um, you know, characters that it revolves around. Now, if you count those five, that's where I see Perrin being a little bit of the the weak point, but that's not saying much. It's not saying that it's bad. It's just the only thing I can objectively kind of see. Now, again, I can objectively see them gutting the books and that concept being not, it can't be tolerated by some of the book lovers. I get that. I totally get that. I would totally sit there and agree with many of the points about how it was structured. You have eight episodes to do one book. I love it. And I'm happy that it's done this well. I will not argue someone's viewpoint of, this is terrible, like this is what they did to the books, and they could point out everything. And I get it. I really do get it. So, to me though, I don't see this being something that's lost, because it will elevate the franchise if that makes a difference from a point of view of global understanding of what it is what the wheel of time is right like lord of the rings what it became you're not going to get that with the shinara series right now it could happen in the future but i could definitely see this having a movie being done by you know this fucking lord of the rings guy right pick somebody peter jackson whatever and it's going to be uh, a broadening scope or a chunk focused on like because this has that weight so i'm giving this first season uh, a total recommendation D D fans i think are gonna love it there is a balance though that you'll have to get used to it's not as comic book ish as hercules or legend of the seeker but it's not as serious bullshit as game of thrones it's trying to find a blend Telling a real, you know, role-playing experience, in my opinion, with the certain characters that are highlighted, to what they represent, and, you know, what their futures might be here and there. The special effects have been really good, in my opinion. Uh, I would say, smartly done. Well, you're not going to see the best. You're not going to see season five dragons from Game of Thrones type things. But to show that they do it smart, with the right lighting, and things are dark when they need to be, and... Um, landscapes are shot in a certain way the cinematography, I think they're doing it very smart uh, and I think that's helping me adjust to the differences between the books and the show and I mention that here and there from these podcasts uh, do it well and I'll I'll let go of my own attachments and see someone else's vision of something and you go along with it, so the Wheel of Time, Episode 8, Eye of the World. The name of the first book, technically, well, there's prequels that came out. You know how that works, right? So, 
Um, you can technically go further, but you know, the way the books are published is, I don't know, I think this is like an 80s type novel that was, um, you know, published by 90s type, you know how those things work. Um, so I'm going to say it's, um, not as, um, well known in that sense. And I think this is a great addition to grow the name in the wheel of time and it could it expand into other things i hope so do i want to see confirmed for season two and three and four yes i want to hear that news early but i stay away from a lot of these things because i'm you know just trying to you know not get too much but now that the first season's over i might even go look around do some research and find out some little things and then maybe do a season one in retrospective type thing and you know in general type episode where i did these week to week but normally like if i'm going to do hawkeye i'm just going to do hawkeye and just do the whole series so maybe this will be one where i recap it and after i've gone and looked at other people's point of views i try to stay away from that until i you know my podcast is recorded in any case this is the wheel of time uh really good show for me, it's borderlining on great, and I'm loving it. I do have an understanding of its attachment to people in the books and how that differs, so I get it. I do recommend this show to everybody. I think you'll have enough of everything to gain, get your interest and keep you going, so it's a definite recommendation. Again, happy holidays to everybody. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. A wonderful new year. My best to you and yours. Take care.